Hello, I am Ishtar Tabasu from Octavo Systems. In this video, let's look at each of the onboard peripherals of the OSG Zoo 3 Ref development platform and use the instructions from the Getting Started Guide to access them. Before moving forward with this video, make sure you watch our unboxing and power up video. The OSG Zoo 3 Ref offers a wide range of onboard peripherals to help you with most of your design needs. Let's begin with the display interfaces. We have a LVDS panel connector and an I2C touch connector that uses PL logic and will allow customers to develop portable or handheld applications that require a screen. The LVDS interface supports up to 4K resolution. The PL IP for the LVDS display and touch controller has been provided by our technology partners DesignLinks. The part numbers of compatible LVDS displays are listed on the official schematics of the board, which is available on our website. We also have a display port connection that uses two GTR lanes and supports up to 4K external monitor. Here, we are using the display port HDMI adapter that comes in the box to connect an external monitor. The OST Zoo 3 Ref development platform uses display port as primary video output if no display port is available, LVDS output is used. Moving on to memory devices, we have a micro SD slot as primary boot. Petal Linux is currently running from the SD card in the slot. We have a 16 GB onboard eMMC and a SATA 3.0 interface that uses one GTR lane that can interface with your standard SATA drives. I have connected a Kingston 240 GB SSD to the SATA port. Let's take a look at the attached memory devices from the Linux console using ftisk-l command as shown in the getting started guide, ftisk-l. You can see three memory devices under slash dev. They are MMC block 0, MMC block 1, and SDA. MMC block 0 is eMMC, MMC block 1 is SD card, and SDA is the SATA drive. On top of these, we also have access to the QSPY flash present within the SIP for storage. We also have an onboard MAC ID EEPROM that comes pre-programmed with a unique MAC address to help with Ethernet communication. The onboard EEPROM is in addition to the 32 kilobit EEPROM that is inside the SIP, which is also available to store any hardware specific information. The 32 kilobit EEPROM internal to the OST Zoo 3 SIP is available under I2C bus 0 at address 0x50. The 2 kilobit onboard EEPROM is also available under I2C bus 0 at address 0x51. We can access the EEPROMs using SysFS and their bus addresses. Let me quickly read their name property using cat command as shown in the getting started guide. Cat sys bus i squared c devices 0 0050 name gives the name property of the EEPROM inside the SIP. The name is 24AA32AT. CAT sys bus i squared c devices 0 0051 name gives the name property of the onboard EEPROM. The name is i squared c dash EEPROM. The onboard EEPROM is given a more generic name. Let's take a look at some of the other important ports of the board. We have a dual UART to USB bridge with a micro USB port. This interface is currently being used for the UART console. We have a USB-C port with OTG capability. It uses one GTR lane and can support up to USB 3.0 speeds. Additionally, the port can provide up to one amp at five volts for downstream devices. Let's list all the connected USB-C devices using LSUSB command as shown in the getting started guide, LSUSB. Genesis Logic 4 port hub is the name of the USB-C hub that I'm using. Logitech Unifrank receiver is the dongle for my keyboard and mouse. Moving on, we also have a gigabit ethernet port. I have connected it to our office network. Let's ping Google and see if we can get a response. 8888 is the IP address of Google's DNS server. Let's ping 8. 888. We did get a response, so we know we are connected to the internet. Great. Moving on to expansion ports, we have one PSP mod and dual PLP mod interfaces. By default, the PSP mod supports expanded SPI, PLP mod A supports expanded UART, and PLP mod B supports expanded I2C. 
We also have one micro click header that gives you access to a long list of micro add-on boards. The PLI we required to bring PLP mods and some of the interfaces of the micro header to life is provided as part of the official Octavo Petalinux image developed in partnership with DesignMix. On top of these, we also have one FMC LPC connector and one LR44 button cell socket to help build or debug RTC and low power applications. For user I.O., we have one PS LED, eight PL LEDs, three push buttons, and eight DIP switches. As a demo, let's toggle the PL LED D27 as shown in the Getting Started Guide. To do that, let's navigate to Sys Class LEDs, CD Sys Class LEDs. If you run the list command here, LS, you can see the available PS and PL user LEDs. The onboard LED designators like D21, D22, etc. are also mentioned in the LED name for easy identification. To turn on D27, I'll be echoing 1 to its brightness property. Echo 1, LED 7, D27 slash brightness. You can see that it is on now. To turn D27 back off, echo 0 to its brightness property. Echo 0 to LED 7, D27 brightness. You can see that D27 has turned off. Next, let's read the status of the 8 DIP switches. We can use GPIO detect command for this as shown in the getting started guide. The DIP switches are available under GPIO chip 8. As you can see on the board, I've set switches 1 to 4 in on position and switches 5 to 8 in off position. When we read them, we should get the status of the first four bits as 1 and the last four as 0. Let me put in the command GPIO get 8012345678. We got four ones and four zeros. There you go. The output matched our expectations. Last but not the least, let's take a look at the debug interfaces. For an easy JTAG debugging, we have provided a Digilent JTAG SMT2 FPGA programmer with micro USB port on the board. We also have a header available to connect any of your existing SmartLink JTAG cables as well. We have a PM bus header to allow monitoring of the two internal pins. Finally, a Sysmon header has been provided to monitor the operating conditions of the FPGA, such as device junction temperature, supply voltages, and external voltages. For more detailed information on getting started, please refer to the Getting Started Guide on our website.